I don't know why, but for some reason, we humans seem to be hell-bent on making robots that look like us. We can make them in any shape, size, or configuration that we want, but there's still a subset of roboticists that insist on making humanoids. Why? I don't really know. It could be for any number of reasons. Maybe it's narcissism and we're just so obsessed with ourselves that we can't resist building robots in our own image. Or maybe it could be for practical reasons. I mean, if we want robots that live and work alongside humans, it makes sense to give them bodies and appendages much like our own. Or heck, maybe it's just a hard thing to do and we love a good challenge. The reason isn't clear, but one thing is for sure though. We've been making humanoid robots for a long time, and they're starting to get really good. I'm Drew Prindle, and this is Robots Everywhere, a show where we chronicle the slow but steady takeover of our future robot overlords and show you how they're making their way into practically every facet of modern life. In the 1930s, talking robots were built primarily to amuse and entertain. One of the earliest humanoid robots to gain widespread notoriety was Eric, the world's first British robot, who made his debut in 1928 after the Duke of York cancelled his planned appearance at London's exhibition of the Society of Model Engineers. It was basically a gathering that would probably just be called a hobbyist meetup if it happened today. So in order to fill the void left by the Duke of York, one of the model makers in the club stepped up and offered to build a man of tin to give the opening address. And that's exactly what he did. At the event's opening, Eric the Robot took to the stage, rose to his feet, bowed to the audience, and then gave a four-minute opening address. Technically, the address was given by a human backstage who beamed his voice to the robot via radio, but still, that's pretty impressive for 1928. Fast forward a decade or so, and we got another noteworthy humanoid robot. At the 1939 World's Fair, the Westinghouse Electric Corporation unveiled Electro, a seven-foot-tall, 265-pound robot that could speak about 700 words, all on his own, by the way, thanks to a 78 RPM record player that was inside his chest. He could also blow up balloons, smoke cigarettes, and move his head and arms. He even had photoelectric eyes that could distinguish between red and green light. Like, I have no idea what that was actually good for, but again, that's pretty impressive for 1939. That said, regardless of how impressive the tech was for the time, humanoid robots were still very much in their infancy back then, and they remained there for another half century or so. It wasn't really until the turn of the millennium, the year 2000, that humanoid robots emerged from their infancy and reached a key milestone, the ability to walk on their own. One of the first robots to achieve this was Honda's Azimo, the end result of nearly two decades of research and development aimed at creating a bipedal robot that could autonomously balance, self-regulate, and walk just like a human. Technically, there were a few early prototypes that walked before Osimo, but Osimo was the full package. He could walk, he could sense the terrain under his feet, he could detect obstacles, and eventually he could even do stuff like climb stairs and kick soccer balls. As Honda continued to improve him, he also gained the ability to recognize moving objects, gestures, sounds, and even faces, which taken together allowed him to interact with humans. In a lot of ways, Osimo was a turning point. Just a few years after that debut, humanoid robotics really started to take off. The mid to late 2000s saw the birth of tons of other humanoid robots with even more impressive abilities, like the iCub, for example, a robot designed to mimic the abilities of a three and a half year old child, and that was capable of not only grasping objects with its extremely dexterous hands, but also expressing emotions by moving parts of its face. Another one that's worth mentioning is Now from SoftBank Robotics, which is a lot like Osimo, but smaller and designed specifically as a programmable platform for robotics researchers. Almost immediately, people started programming teams of Now robots to play soccer against each other in the infamous RoboCup competition. So robots quite literally went from baby steps to full-on soccer matches in just a few short years. Excitingly, that feverish pace of progress isn't showing any signs of slowing. Just look at Sophia from Hanson Robotics, arguably one of the most advanced humanoid robots produced to date. She doesn't play soccer, but thanks to a mind-boggling array of micromotors and actuators in her face, she's capable of producing over 50 unique facial expressions. That's something that robots typically can't do at all, but it's an absolutely crucial part of human communication. Now, wiggling her eyebrows isn't her only talent, though. Thanks to Google's speech recognition technology, she can also recognize and speak multiple different languages, and even hold a basic conversation. The only downside, of course, is that you've got to stare into those dead, lifeless eyes while you talk to her, and try your hardest not to fixate on that weird, bald head with the transparent back section. Why didn't they give her hair? 
I mean, seriously, you could design a robot with like 50 facial features, but you couldn't finish the job by slapping a wig on her? Come on, man! Anywho, Sophia is definitely impressive, but hands down the best example of the insane pace of humanoid robotic progress is Atlas from Boston Dynamics. This sucker debuted back around 2013, and back then the robot could do things like balancing on one foot, walking over super uneven terrain, and recovering from hits and pushes without toppling over. But then things started to get crazy. Just a couple years later, Boston Dynamics released a video showing a new and improved version of Atlas that could do some absolutely mind-boggling things, like walking on a snow-covered hillside where it actually couldn't see what the terrain was like underneath, or predict how that terrain might change when stepped on. It could also recognize objects, bend over to pick them up, and then recover if something was dropped or hit out of its hands by some evil humans with hockey sticks. And as if that wasn't wild enough, a couple years later Boston Dynamics raised the bar yet again and showcased Atlas running, doing parkour, and hucking backflips off of boxes. So within the span of about five years, humanoid robots went from walking to doing full-on gymnastics and executing moves that most humans can't do. And that's what blows my mind the most. Not the backflips and the crazy stunts, but the pace of progress that those stunts represent. It took us until the year 2000 to teach robots how to walk, but less than a decade to teach them how to do parkour. So despite the fact that humanoid robots have been a sci-fi dream for most of human history, we are now at a point where the prospect of living and working alongside robots isn't just possible, it's actually likely to happen in the near future. Based on the trajectory of innovation that we've seen, I'm willing to bet that we're just a few short years away from having advanced humanoid robots everywhere.